in, in our season opener for season five, um, uh, Booth has woken up from his uh, brain surgery, from his coma, but he's slightly changed. There's a number of things that have changed about him that he has to deal with as we start uh, this season. Amongst them, he has, he's very confused about his real feelings for uh, Brennan, and uh, he doesn't wear his fancy socks. They slept together, and although it was in an alternate reality, they did sleep together. It was the truth and of their... It was the truth of their emotional life that neither of them can admit. So that's really what you came away with at the end of that episode. So when you realize that Brennan was writing that from her perspective, and he was feeling that in this comatose state that he was in, and they were both feeling that same thing, it did essentially have a reality of its own, which does carry through in, into this season. And what we want to try to do this season is to kind of take um, uh, a step forward and back at the same time, re, re affirm the premise of the series that these are two people who obviously should be together, who have to deny it in some way for their own survival, but can't stand when they're not when they're not in each other's company. So it did kind of re, you know, give birth to the series all over again, I think. Well, well kind of a as we said, in season five is going to, going to reset the series. We're going, we're going back to, while there will be continuing stories, uh, especially the emotional life of Booth and Brennan, the emotional life, uh, lives of our squints, um, we're going to have a real episodic feel to this, uh, to season five, um, and probably learn a little bit more about the squints than we have in the past. Is yeah, that, is that yeah. We've uh, we've decided to um, um, forego long character arcs, um, such as Bo uh, uh, Hodgins and Angela or Booth and Brennan as arcs. Those arcs are going to exist, but they are going to be very episodic, um, and the result is that we'll be able to do. Um, it, uh, one more story per episode that is amongst set amongst the squints, um, so that we can um, we can look into their characters a bit more. Also, this year we want to go a bit more into Booth's um, family. Um, you know, his brother Jared, played by Brendan Fair, is a is a good addition uh, to our um, our cast, our our uh, recurring characters. Um, and also, I, I, we're really hoping to um, meet uh, Booth's uh, much beloved grandfather um, in this um, in this season. And I hope we do something fancy with the casting uh, there. Um, and then uh, we also have um, a few hanging chads um, in Brennan's personal life as well. That we we just want to go to that stuff and watch them, the two of them, deal with that together. Uh, the title of the season premiere is The Harbingers in the Fountain. Um, a, uh, a psychic, played by Cindy Lauper, she's actually Angela's psychic, um, tells Booth and Brennan that there's a large number of bodies buried beneath a, um, a fountain that have been there for about 10 years. And uh, even though they don't believe in psychics, they jump at the chance to work together for the first time since uh, Booth uh, was in his coma. Uh, and lo and behold, the psychic was right. There's a bunch of bodies under the fountain. We met Cindy. We went and had breakfast with her one morning because uh, we heard that she was interested in doing the show, and that just seemed like a huge uh, Christmas gift to us. Yeah. Um, Last year, um, we did an um, uh, open mic. Um, uh, in season four, we did an open mic episode in which uh, Emily... It was the, it was the um, episode right before the writer's strike, and we had written in that Emily was going to do girls, girls just want to have, have fun. fun and it was um, it was amusing because Emily said that's not in my register I can't sing that well to which we said a it's kind of funny if you don't sing it well and B there's a writer's strike we can't type in another song the script is the script is what it is um, and so she had to sing girls just want to have fun um, which and she which did a very credible job at. She was very, very good. Um, and the, we had said that the character of, um, um, I think you wrote a part where um, Emily was told by her mother when she was a kid that she could sing better than Cindy Lauper. Better Lauper's. than Cindy Lauper, that's right. And Cindy saw that, likes the show, loved the show, and they got in touch with us. When we last uh, visited the um, Hodgins-Angela relationship, Hodgins was lying on his back in the Mexican desert 
with a terrible, terrible hangover and a very large uh, tattoo of Angela on his shoulder. Um, he had run afoul of um, uh, Angela's father, um, the, the Reverend Willie G, played by um, Billy Gibbons, um, and um, it was now marked. Um, I think the audience agrees with um, Billy Gibbons, with Angela's father, that these two uh, belong together. Um, they have many... They have many obstacles to overcome.